Hello everyone. I'm Mrs. Rekha Asin, Assistant Professor of English. The session today is on the poem The Richard Corey by Edwin Arlington Robinson. This poem has been prescribed for Sem 1 BBE with the text titled Compulsory Foundation Course in English by Manglo University. Richard Corey by Edwin Arlington Robinson. Before going to the poem, we'll have the introduction to the poet. Edwin Arlington Robinson, he had a very interesting early childhood. He was an American poet. His spirit falls from December 22nd, 1869 to April 6, 1935. He won the Pazur Prize for Poetry on three occasions and was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature four times. Though he had such a glory in his life, but his early life was struggling. Robinson's early struggles led many of his poems to have a dark pessimism and his stories to deal with an American dream gone awry. He describes his childhood as dark and unhappy. The reason behind this is that parents wanted a girl child, a girl baby, but he was born and uh, the parents were so disappointed that uh, he was not given a name till six months. When they visited a holiday resort once, the vacationers who stayed in that resort decided to give him a name and selected the name Edwin from a hat containing a random set of boys' names. This is how he got the name Edwin. But the man who drew the name, who gave him the name, was from Arlington, Matchset. So he got Arlington as the middle name. This is why he hated his name, not only his given name, but his family habits of calling him Win. Instead of calling him Edwin, they used to call him Win. This is how his early life was struggling. His second volume in literature, The Children of the Night, had somewhat wider circulation. In the age of free verse, he wrote with the old fashioned technical precision. The dark pessimism in his poetry is attributed to the trials and tribulations that his family faced, the early struggles as a young poet. Robinson is best known for his Tilbury Town poems in which he depicts the misfits of a fictional town. Now, getting to the poem. The four stanzas of the poem brings a very serious image of uh, Richard Corey who stroll around the streets of poverty, stricken streets, whose residents feel envious of his wealth. The end of his life is a twist in the story which shocks the people who lived on the pavement. This poem depicts the strong illusion and the misconception the people who lived in the pavement, the common people, that nobody knew what runs in the life of the people, what is hidden behind the smile of an individual. This is always unknown and uh, people will always have a misconception looking at uh, the rich people. They feel those kind of people are their role models. This is related to the series of economic depression that struck years in 1980s. The speaker identifies 
in the second line of the poem. We wonder who is the speaker, but uh, he reveals himself. He unfolds himself in the second line of the poem. The speaker's observation of Richard Corey, a clear difference between the gentleman and the group to which the speaker belongs. He belongs to the group of common people, the people on the pavement. He is one of the common people who are citizens of the town in which Richard Corey dwells. Because of uh, the setting of this poem is uh, during the time of the depression of uh, 1893, there was uh, a great uh, division between the wealthy and the common people. The common people who went without the meat and they cursed that bread. Because of uh, this division, the townspeople perceive Richard Corey as a uh, completely unlike them. Richard Corey is a uh, completely a different individual Though he belongs to the people of a rich caste, but uh, he is a common man in his living, in his style of dressing, in his way of conversation with the common people. The gestures of him are refined. But we observe a sad end of this Richard Corey. A tragic end of this Richard Corey where he commits suicide in the end. Having these glimpse of uh, the background of uh, the 18th century and uh, the life of uh, the part will have a description of uh, the poem Richard Corey line by line. Richard Corey by Edwin Allington Robinson. One hour Richard Corey went downtown. We people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. Richard Corey, a very rich, sophisticated, learned, disciplined gentleman. Whenever I used to stroll around the downtown, the poverty-stricken place, the common people where they used to live in that area used to have a walk. The people of that place, they loved to look at him. He never showed off his wealth, either through his dressing or through his conversation. He never gave them the impression that he is different from them. His uh, dress was clean, simple, and people get excited whenever he wished them good morning. All the rich people, they maintain a distance with the common people. But here Richard Corey, as a common man, though he belonged to the rich community, but his way of living was as common as the common people. From soul to crown, he was a gentleman. From bottom to top and top to bottom, he was a real gentleman. He had all the characters of a gentleman. Very simple, disciplined, well-mannered. In the conversation, he was a very gentle. So people liked him like anything. They called him as their role model, clean favored and imperially slim. As we expect from our role model to be very simple, very slim, very disciplined, well-mannered, in the same way he was imperially slim. Coming to the next answer. And he was always quietly arrayed. And he was always human when he talked. But still he fluttered pulses when he said good morning and he glittered when he walked. His behavior was just like common people and normal in his speech. 
his style of living always excited the people and they became more conscious when he wished them whenever he walked he shined he fluttered he excited their pulses whenever he wished them good morning we can't expect a rich person wishing a common person the greetings of the day but here richard corey being a different man from his uh, own community he always lived a, a very simple and a common life simple dressed quietly arrayed always humane in his talk and walk getting to the third stanza of the poem and he was rich yes richer than a king and admirably schooled in every grace in fine we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place he was rich when now uh, we look at his appearance he looked rich richer than the king wealthier than the king at the same time he is a uh, well mannered even and very sophisticated he had all the qualities that every individual wished to have he had an admirable school schooling in every grace he is well educated and as uh, everybody he had a graceful schooling his life was so impressive that people wish to have his life they are envious of his life they want uh, their life to be like richard corey they want to live his life they didn't know the life he was undergoing they didn't know him exactly of his life getting to the last stanza of the poem so on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread and richard corey one calm summer night went home and put a bullet through his head as everyone did the common people also worked and they were very patiently to become their life better like uh, richard corey they waited for long they expected something good would happen in their life as richard corey's life had the poor people cursed their life of eating bread and no meat the rich people they had rich food but the poor people they have to fulfill themselves with the bread so they cursed their poor living they cursed their poverty stricken life look at the twist of the poem look at the twist in the life of richard corey on one calm summer night he returned home and put a bullet through his head the common people they are unaware of his life but looking at only as it appears to them they are envious of his life and wanted his living when people are waiting for something good to happen some miracle to happen in their life they heard a thunder in the life of richard corey that one summer night he shot himself through his head the end of the richard corey seems to be normal but this is what going on in everybody's life he is the representative of the society we see the people like richard corey around us the irony of this poem the irony of richard corey is that while he was wealthy richard corey evidently is not happy 
through this poem we get an impression that uh, he wasn't happy in his life though he seemed to be happy though he smiled though he always had a smile on his face but his end of life make us feel that something was going on in his uh, life something uh, he had uh, worries in life at the end of the poem the speaker describes how he written home and put a bullet through his head on a summer night with apparently no warning when uh, the people are expecting good to happen in their life when uh, uh, they looked at this richard corey they had a positive thought about their life but the end of his life shocked this uh, common people the poem conveys the message that a book should not be judged by its cover in the same way a person should not be judged by his appearance the appearance may be different from the fact the poem richard corey is a uh, conversational in tone that shows uh, why we should not judge people on appearance that goes beyond our expectation in the final line regarding the structure and form of the poem is uh, written in four quatrains written in iambic pentameter with a simple a b a b rhyme scheme the language of the poem is very straightforward but the life of richard corey is complex the fact that the rhythm and rhyme are so consistent throughout the poem makes us reveal at the end of the stanza which was a very shocking one so with the end of uh, this poem there is a message that don't judge the people by their appearance the fact may be different and the appearance may be different with this i come to the end of the poem if you want to have a further reading you can go to the text of uh, bb uh, sem 1 compulsory foundation course in english thank you one and all have a nice day